our company is now Meta. Our mission remains the same. It's still about bringing people together. Uh, Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because our cars are, like I said, semi-sentient robots on wheels. Go, Jeff, go, Mark, go, Wally, go, Oliver. You are going to space. Woo! The tech industry today has an estimated worth of 5 trillion US dollars, and in the past decade, those leading it have cooked up fortunes worth millions, making them some of the richest people in the world. Fahim Saleh was one of those people. By the time he was in high school in the early 2000s, he had already created his first tech company and was making money off it. And by the age of 33, he had a fortune of approximately 150 million dollars. However, his life would be cut short by a terrible event. In July of 2020, his cousin went into his apartment after she called and texted several times. When she arrived, she found Fahim's body dismembered and put into several garbage bags. Days later, his former assistant, Tyrese Haspel, was arrested. Not only was he caught using Fahim's card after his death, but he had been stealing from him for years and even posing as him in different social situations. The alleged killer would have killed Fahim in an attempt to make his debt go away. Although this case has not been closed yet, there are many twisted details to unpack that paint a picture of what happened to the young CEO. Fahim Saleh was born on December 12, 1986, in Saudi Arabia. His parents were originally from Bangladesh and moved all over the world for work. When Fahim was still very young, they relocated to the United States, where his father worked as a computer programmer to provide for his wife, son, and two daughters. It was this technological upbringing that made Fahim interested in tech himself, and from a very young age, he taught himself how to code. By the time he was in high school, He'd launched several websites and services online that began making him money. And after graduating from Bentley University, he wanted to create apps that added value to humanity. He founded Pathal, a delivery service app that became wildly popular in Bangladesh and Nepal. He also co-founded Gokada, which operated in Nigeria. Fahim would invest in several projects, especially in developing countries, to help promote the tech industry and bring money to startups in countries with less opportunities. Fahim and his family were very close. One of his sisters would later state that Fahim's brain was a bottomless magic hat of ideas big and small, wacky and serious, local and global. You never knew what he was going to pull out next, but he got to work on every idea immediately. He couldn't let one sit. He was too excited to usher the vision in his head into the world for the rest of us to enjoy. So when Fahim Saleh, the wealthy entrepreneur who was doing a lot of good work in the tech world, didn't pick up the phone, his family sensed something wasn't right. On July 13th, 2020, Fahim went out for a run. When he got back to his $2 million condo in the Lower East Side of Manhattan, he took the elevator to the seventh floor. After that, he never picked up his phone or answered to any texts again. The next day at 3 p.m., after trying to communicate with him for hours with no response, one of his cousins who lived in New York decided to stop by and see if he was okay. She rang the intercom downstairs, but there was no response. Since she had a set of keys, she entered the building and let herself into the apartment. What she found would scar her forever. The cousin discovered his dismembered body in the living room of his apartment with his head, arms, and legs amputated. Fahim Saleh's torso was on the floor surrounded by blood. There were no limbs attached to it. They had all been cut off and stuffed into plastic bags. His head was also gone, found in another plastic bag away from the rest of the body. An electric saw was resting on the floor, still plugged in, with fresh blood on the blades. Cleaning supplies were waiting to be used nearby. Whoever had done this had been doing it minutes before Fahim's cousin entered the apartment. There were no signs of a struggle and nothing seemed to be stolen. This level of brutality didn't match a robbery gone wrong. Someone wanted Fahim dead and gone and was planning to dispose of the body in the most cruel way. 
This is an ongoing case, and a trial has still not been held, so many details of the investigation are still unknown. However, what we know is more than enough to understand that this is a twisted killer we're talking about. The crime scene, brutal as it was, gave investigators many leads. It's believed that when Fahim's cousin rang the bell, the killer was still in the apartment, attempting to get rid of the body and destroy any evidence. The saw, the cleaning supplies, they were still working on covering their tracks when they were interrupted by an unexpected family member stopping by to check on Fahim. When the buzzer went off, the killer fled through an alternative service entrance with no choice but to leave the crime scene halfway through cleaning up. As well as Fahim's body and the saw that had been used to dismember him, police found a taser, possibly the one used to stun Fahim. The security footage from the building showed a man wearing a face mask, since this happened in times of COVID. He'd entered the building after Fahim, and he followed him all the way to his floor. A struggle was seen while the two exited the elevator. This is when police suspect that he was stunned. But what really tied everything together was Fahim's credit cards. The killer had used his card to buy the cleaning supplies and the saw he used after killing Fahim, and even paid for the car ride to the store with it. They also found a man buying a taser gun, just like the one found at the scene. After looking into who this person was, they were able to identify their prime suspect. His name is Tyrese Haspil, and he was Fahim's former assistant. When Fahim saw Tyrese's application online to become his assistant, he was moved. He was still in high school, and he'd had a rough upbringing while having to live in a foster home. But he was interested in tech and wanted to learn from someone self-made like Fahim, so Fahim hired him as his assistant to help him get started in the tech world. However, as soon as he began working for him, Tyrese got lost in the luxurious lifestyle of millionaires. He would often pose as Fahim while running errands for him, or would change his job title on emails to chief of staff instead of personal assistant. If Fahim was out of town, he would let himself into his Lower East Side apartment and invite his friends over, telling people it was his own condo. In 2019, however, Tyrese was fired. Fahim discovered his assistant had been stealing money from him using his cards and accounts to pay for expensive items, and the debt had piled up to $100,000. Fahim knew Tyrese was just a kid, and he didn't want to get him into trouble with the law. So they came up with a deal in which Tyrese would slowly pay Fahim back for all the money he owed him. This is the favor that investigators believe cost Fahim his life. Police arrested Tyrese on July 17th in a very expensive Airbnb he was renting, just four days after Fahim was killed. He was charged with Fahim Saleh's murder and taken into custody. Although the evidence points all fingers at him, Tyrese insists he's innocent. The alleged killer pled not guilty to the second-degree murder charges and is currently awaiting trial. Fahim's sister made a video here on YouTube, talking about her brother, speaking for her family, and the pain they've endured. Fahim was a kind soul who was trying to make the world a better place, and someone took advantage of that kindness. I've linked her video down below, and I encourage you to watch it, to learn more about the story. This is a case we'll be following closely, to see the outcome, and hopefully bring justice to Fahim Saleh and his mourning family. Thank you for watching another video from the back of the archive. Like if you found it interesting, and subscribe if you don't want to miss any new ones. See you in the next one.